Good morning. Well, we're the only ones in the Robin Hood car park. <laughs> so a bit of an early start today. Got a real good walk today. Bronze Age stone circles, the lairs of goblins, a 1970s horrific murder, and then across the back of Chatsworth House. So lots to see and do today and some really interesting stuff. So without further ado, we'll crack on. This is an interesting footpath. It said sign footpath closed up there, but I'm going to take a stab that I can get over because this is the only route I've got. That is a bit fucked, but I think I can get through down there. So uh, I'll give it a go. This might be fun. But looks like there was a bridge here that's been washed away in the floods. But uh, I think we can get over this way personally. Looks like somebody's already been over this way before. Adapt and overcome, my friend. Adapt and overcome. Yeah, look at that. Proper buggered. But we've managed to get through. So uh, I don't know, I'm always let them tell you what to do, mate. So we're going to follow this path now. A lovely bird song. That's a chiff chaff. I can hear a song fish in the background of Blackbird, but this one here is cheap, 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 cheap. That's a chiff chaff. Lovely little path this look. Doesn't look very well worn. I suspect a lot of people aren't using that one. But yeah. I'm gonna go up here, fork over to the right, and to Billy Moore. In this tree, chiff chaff. Up here somewhere. There's a song for at the top of this tree. Hear him? Absolutely beautiful. What a lovely piece of heathland that is, meadow, whatever you want to call it. All those are birds, cool rocks here. We're going over this style, starting to head away up onto open access land. Look at this, remind you when you were kids wading for the woods. <laughs> Beautiful, lovely little, fairly young wooden ladder, I would say. A lot of silver birch in here, which grow quite quickly. But it's good to see this sort of thing sprouting again. I'm guessing also how quickly it sprouts as well. There's lots of birch, silver birch in here, and there'll be things like hazel and all sorts. But yeah, beautiful little path. This. Not very much, I don't think that's used very much either, or hasn't been recently. But uh, yeah, I love this sort of thing, getting out in the woods. Hope to do some camping in the woods, there, a bit of luck. But uh, yeah, beautiful. I guess the only thing with all these bracken and everything is ticks. So I've got my gaiters on, took my socks in, quite well covered up, but well, we'll do a tick check when I get back. My uh, partner had a tick bite and uh, preventatively, I think they treated her for Lyme's disease because it had the old uh, target mark on it. So, and I'll tell you what, you wouldn't have noticed that tick, it was so small, so small. So you've got to be so careful. Be a lot of deer in these woods, a lot of sheep on the hills, and they're all like full of ticks. So, uh, some lovely old rocks in here. This, a, this woodland sort of reclaimed itself a bit, I think. Look at this here. That big old rock. It's a beaut, isn't it? Anyway, we'll carry on through here. On the map, it doesn't show woodland at all, it just shows fields, so it shows it is relatively new, like I keep banging on about. Mr. Repetitive. A 
lots of a uh, cuckoo spit around, as we used to call it when we were kids, which I believe is uh, a larvae of some sort of insect. I'll check out what exactly insect, and it covers itself in like this protective foam. Um, I'll do a bit of digging and let you know in more detail on the screen. Fox gloves are starting to come out too. Uh, digitalis, I think they're called, and that's used in some heart treatments, I believe. Also quite toxic if you take it without sort of you know, knowing what you're doing. Beautiful little brook. This runs parallel to the A619 called Heathy Lee Brook. Look at that, beautiful. I bet you'll get dippers on here. Pound to a pinch of shit. But yeah, so we start to climb shortly. Beautiful path, but very boggy. I'm glad I put my gaiters on. I just knew it'd be like this up here. So, uh, yeah, very waterlogged. Quite a few marshy bits, but look at that stunning view. Look at that nice little valley. That's more of a, a brook than a path. You can hear it bubbling down into there. There's a, there's a bit of a memorial there. Let's see if it says who it's to. In love in memory of Stan and Iris Sharp. That's beautiful, that. Someone clearly comes up here and looks after it. I'm assuming they must be either locals or people who, uh, you know, come up, used to come up here a lot. Such a beautiful area. Anyway, we're about to turn up now. Bit of a climb up there, up onto Bealey Moor and Gibbet Moor and Holland Edge is where we're going. Looking back down the A619 there, I think that mast is the uh, Bowl Hill one on Ian Moore, I think. And it's a 619 to Chesterfield. I'll tell you a story about that when we get up here. There was quite a horrific murder back in the 70s uh, that happened in this area. But uh, let's get up on top first. It's quite humid today, sweating quite a bit. Um, it's only about 15 degrees, but it just feels very damp. But yeah, heading down here now. So this, we're on Gibbet Moor now. Now, for those of you who don't know what a gibbet is, I'll put an image up. A gibbet was a wooden structure with like a cage on, and they used to hang people in there, well, leave people in there. Um, sometimes after they executed them, so the birds could pick the bones clean and warn other people, and the clanking of the bones would uh, sort of remind people, you know, don't mess around. But they also used to do live gibbeting. So they would put someone in there alive and leave them until they died, which would be quite a horrific way to go. And this moor was the site of the last live gibbeting in England in the 17th century. So a vagrant was begging for food in a local village and he killed a woman in her cottage and he was brought up here and left in a gibbet to die. Now, depending what time of year that was, mate, it wouldn't take you long, I don't think, and it can quite, quite bleak up here. And I'm guessing they probably put you there with very little. So yeah, a bit more. Beautiful. Not a soul. Not seen anybody yet. I am quite early, but yeah, not seen a soul. I'm assuming it's some sort of uh, open access land up here. Um, whether it's part of a shooting estate, I don't know. I've not seen any signs, but there's the tracks and that normally, whichever that sort of thing. But yeah, so we're going to head along a bit more now down towards the home and lair of a goblin. So I'll see you when we get over there. Love the old barn when I got here. There were some swallows sat on the edge there, but they've all cleared off now. But yeah, lovely, isn't it? That? Some swallows nests in there. An the old stoop over there as well. We managed to miss that shower. A bit showery today, but I'm hoping to dodge them. But we're going to head along this track now. I think that's bunker wood over the back there and uh, yeah along to Harland Edge. See all the uh, cotton grass, bog grass, bog cotton, whatever you call it, that's all uh, well out now isn't it, look at that. See a big patch up there as well, beautiful. We're following this track now, I've just had a bit of a concern that the route on the way back might be closed off because it's through the Chatsworth estate. I've seen lots of gates here now with private access, so I'm have to rethink my way back. But yeah, look at that beautiful, stunning view down there. You can just see Wynn Hill and the uh, 
standard edge, Bamford edge, sorry, and uh, the light, but it's not looking too bad now, it's cleared up a bit. I don't think there's any rain now forecast, touch wood, because it's a bit black over there until this afternoon, I think. But yeah, not seeing anybody yet. Is there a match on or something? <laughs> anyway, let's crack on down here and then worst case I have to come back the way I came or I'll try and find an alternative route or it's quite a lot there just float from there or maybe a bit of trespassing, let's see. Certainly planting all these trees, look at this, it's brilliant. These look all like native trees. Quite sure what they are. I bet there'll be silver birch and stuff in there. But I just spotted, I'll put a picture up. I think it's a willow warbler dotting around. It's like a I can't read I'm not Percy Frow, I'm not Percy Fro, what was his name? Guys see the bird impressions anyway, not him. <laughs> but uh yeah, lovely. Yeah, imagine what this will be like in 10, 20 years. Fantastic, so I bet it was all just bog land before. So uh, good to see that they're replanting or rewilding, as they call it. What a beautiful little woodland! It's all silver birch. Just rewilding that bit, now going back out to some heathland and heather again. But yeah, I read a really good book actually, Homo Britannicus. Don't read that wrong, but it's a really good book about the history of how Britain was populated over the time, you know, it went through periods of a, not no one being here at all during various ice ages and periods in between them. But yeah, but the one thing I did note on that is that one of the first trees to colonise after an ice age, besides things like dwarf willow and stuff, is silver birch. And you can just see that. There's just everywhere, that's just full of silver birch. But yeah, so we're just passing Bunker's Wood now, to the right here, and then we're gonna get up not far now, I don't think, from the house of the goblin. So this is a Bronze Age uh, barrow site quite different in the fact that it's quite square. We're going to walk over it in a moment. In fact, we'll do that now. Um, this VR stone just shows when they sort of surveyed this, which was uh, in the reign of Queen Victoria. But yes, yeah, Bronze Age and Hobhurst was allegedly... Let's get over this fence without breaking my neck. A goblin, what do you want? Allegedly he was a goblin. That was what folklore was. Now, back before Christianity started to make things, you know, classify things as evil and malevolent, goblins were seen as quite benevolent. So it also possibly could come from uh, North Yorkshire folklore as well, Hobber the Hurst. But yeah, so this is a, allegedly the site of a hobgoblin or goblin that used to live here. But you can see it's a square site, uh, Bronze Age. This can be the best part of three and a half to 4,000 years old. But you can see there's a moat here, look around the edge. So it's quite a square site. We're going to take a path along the edge there in a moment. Don't quite see where that path is personally at the moment. There's a bloody great fence here, but we'll, we'll find it. But yeah, anyway, sorry, back to this Hobhurst house. So it's a square, as you can see, with this like barrow in the middle. Has been excavated by Mr. Bateman, who was a quite a Quite a big sort of excavator of these sites back in the day. Um, I think my foot passed back down there. Um, but yeah, that's like uh, really cool that. I'll put some more info about it. But yeah, Hobhurst's house. The house of a goblin. I wonder if we'll see him today. If not, I hope he brings us some luck. Because like I say, the Christians tended to sort of anything that was sort of pagan or pre-Christian 
they would just sort of uh, label as malevolent evil, the devil, that sort of thing. But yeah, some cracking views, as always, these places are just in such stunning locations. Again, I said before, you can see Sir William Hill mast over there, you've got Wynn Hill, then you've got the edges, stunning views. And then over here as well, you can see down to the valley there, which will be the Derwent Valley, because Chatsworth is just behind this wood here. And we're going to head, head along Holland Hedge, but I think, yeah, I think it's there where the path is, so we just need to drop back a little bit. But yeah, it's really cool that. Lots of history around here. This whole place was like a hotbed of um, Bronze Age activity. I've shown you before on other walks I've done, but all around these edges and everywhere, it's just a hotbed of activity. So really interesting that. We're gonna crack on now. There's a few more cairns. We're gonna see another stone circle. Uh, there's also a well. I might take a little diversion up to, uh, I think it's called Umberley Well. There's apparently a good, quite a few good boundary markers up here that are quite old. But uh, I think there's a path here, pretty certain of it. It'll take us along the edge. So I'm gonna get the map out, find out where that is, and uh, we'll crack on along there, I think. I think it's here. There's no real paths here, but there's a little keeper's track or something. So it's a bit sort of cross country, unfortunately. And we're gonna go across Holland Edge to the trig point. I don't think I'll bother going to that well. It's quite off a piece, and quite a bit off a route I wanna to take today. I've got to get to the tip before it shuts at four o'clock, so um, we'll just take this route. This looks like a keeper's track along the edge here, or a sheep trod or something, but we'll keep following that. There we go. Be very careful, look at these rocks and holes. Yeah, you have to be, watch your feet when you're uh, on this sort of land and also ground nesting birds but there's a definite track here you can see it weaving through so we're gonna wind ourselves along Holland Edge which should give us some stunning views so it's all been laying flat could be where a deer slept for the night but uh, we're gonna crack on up here still yeah see a definite track here the bracken hides it quite well, but you can see it here, look, way, winding its way through. Somebody's been through here, or somebody's been here through here quite recently. So, uh, yeah, cool. There we are, top of Harland Edge. It's a bit of a Possible rain shower there, heading this way. Hopefully it doesn't dump its load. Oh yeah, looking down to the valley there. Beautiful. Chatsworth is down here somewhere, uh, behind this hill. I think that's a Swiss cottage over there, which might be where I'm gonna try and get through, but I think it might be all private. But we'll find out when we get, I think we're heading down here to the Trig. I think I can see over there. And then we're gonna cut down here, and then across and back up. So uh, we'll just have to see how we get on with access. If not, I'm gonna have to cut across that path there, back up the way I came, I think. Probably the way I'll do it. But yeah, down here, I can't see it in heather somewhere. I'm not gonna spend too much time. There's another Bronze Age cairn um, around here somewhere. Um, it's all collapsed and been dug up and similar things been found, like bones, lead ore and stuff like that. But we're gonna head over towards the trig this way now. So I'm gonna try and sort of fight my way back up onto the ridge and head off over that way. Definitely old keeper's tracks because it's a grouse butt. So there'll be a big line of them. They don't look like they've been cleared out, so whether they don't do it anymore on this moor. I wanna to head to the trig that way. So that's where I'm headed now. Fight through this heather, there's not really any path to it. It's just a straight across open moorland so it might take a little while. This looks like an old, I don't know if that's an old cairn that they've been dismantled or grouse butts that they just took apart or what, but uh, something there, isn't there? Lots of stone. So, hmm, nothing on the map. Can't see anything about it, so who knows? I can see the trig now in the distance. This is just hell going through here, mate. 
it really is just really heavy going there's the old keeper's path between the grass but otherwise it's just a cross heather but i think once we get to the trig we drop down onto the road trig. Not sure if that's an ethel or not. But anyway, here we are. That was a lot of fucking effort mate. <laughs> anyway. Hold on surface. A fence to damage it. I see that trig point on chimney churn then. I'm gonna report that to that one. So, there you go, I think there's a path here that takes me down to the road, then we're going to skirt around, but yeah, stunning views. You can see over towards, I think, that might be Chesterfield or Sheffield, Chest Sheffield I think, Chesterfield's this way, but yeah, stunning views, what a panorama. I'm going to grab a drink, I head down off here and probably stop for a bit of food somewhere. I'll tell you the story of this horrific murder. So back in 1977, there's a guy called William Hughes, quite a nasty piece of work. He was in prison, he'd rang up his ex-partner, threatened her, knew where she lived, he was going to have her, all that sort of thing. Well, he was being escorted to Chesterfield Court for a remand hearing. So he was in a mini taxi, which I used to do then, back in the day, with two, um, two prison officers. Uh, we were handcuffed one hand to him, that's how they used to do it back then. Anyway, off up the M1, he says, oh, I really need to go to the loo. So they let him go to the toilet. While he was in there, he had a, a concealed boning knife, which he obviously then unsecreted. Got back in a taxi, he basically attacked both prison guards, disabling them, and then forced a the taxi driver to start driving across towards Beely. And uh, basically, um, the weather was really bad, a really bad winter, snow and stuff. Um, he then abandoned them uh, on a 619, I think, and uh, basically dropped them off and then drove on, but then he crashed the car. And then he went across Beely Moor in horrific weather conditions. So when the police found out what was going off, they didn't think he'd gone that way. They thought he had to back down towards Beely itself, but he'd headed across the moor over towards Chesterfield and actually came across a place called Pottery Cottage. And that's what the murders are known as, the Pottery Cottage murders. And there was a family of five people that lived there. Basically, he holed up there for two days, torturing them and stuff, and then basically killed four of them. Uh, the only survivor, I think, was the mother, but I'll put some information up. But anyway, uh, he was out in the car with her mother. She told a neighbor somehow. They went and told the police. There was a high-speed pursuit case. Uh, a copper managed to get into the car. Uh, Hughes was attacking both him and I think the woman's name was Gillian with an axe. And um, basically uh, the, the copper shot him. They shot him the first time, it didn't kill him. So they shot him again and that killed him. So that was horrific, quite famous and uh, probably left quite a mark around here with the locals. But I'll put some more information about that, more details. There's a lot of detail out there on it. It was a big, big article in the press. You know, it caused a lot of fear around here. Oh. There was a skylark in that bush just there then. Bloody hell. Yeah, but that's what was called the Pottery Cottage murders. So the guy went over here. I think Pottery Cottage is over that way on the outskirts of Chesterfield. But anyway, yeah, horrific story that. Horrific story. But anyway, we're going to carry on. We're just going to hit the road now. I'll catch up with you when we get to a really cool boundary stone that's just down this road. So a bit of road walking. Then we're going to head off back across. I'm thinking now I'll follow this road round and then cut back onto the path I came on. I don't think I'm going to get through Chatsworth. Last time I tried that was in about 1985. And me and my mates wanted to get in and see the uh, Lombard Rally used to go through Chatsworth House. There's a gate there. And um, essentially we put all our walking gear on, went through the back of the park, 
claiming to be walkers and then trying to cut down into the rally well we we were on a track and this rally car came belting down we, we all dived in bloody hole for bushes and the like it was a uh, quite scary that all we saw was these big spotlights coming towards us but uh, yeah <laughs> back in the day when you did stupid things like that uh, well I probably still do to be honest but I think I can get through down here uh, what can you get through there's a post down there actually that's right I think we're going to go this way because I can see a stoop. There might be a way over this barbed wire fence down there. Look at that old stoop, milestone, boundary stone. That says back well. And this says she felt that way. Sheffield. She felt, you fucking dickhead. Chesterfield. That way. Sheffield. That way, Bakewell, ha, you dozy twat, Bakewell, that way, and Worksworth, that way, that is cool mate, that would have been an old pack horse route I'm assuming, which is a, quite a few of these around here, a lot of them meet up at uh, Hobhurst, but I'll see if I can get down this path here, this is an old pack horse route. And I'll take some picture of that. That is absolutely cool. There's no one. Can't quite make out what that says. What the heck? Something North Road anyway. That says Chesterfield Road. Tell how old this is. Look, it's got road with an E. Um, that's Chatsworth Road. And then on this side, yeah. Something North Road. I'll have a look. I'll be able to find out. I'll take some pictures out. I love these old. There's loads of them up here, but this is a lot of pack horse routes uh, for various goods and salt and things like that. And they were probably based on old Roman roads for all we know. And they were probably based on old prehistoric roads, so it all goes back. But yeah, it's cool that. We got some pictures of that. You can see Holland Edge where we came across the top there. I'm thinking there's a stone circle here, then I'm going to cut back up onto where we came because uh, all of that's a chat with the state, and I think it just won't be able to get through. Don't want to risk going all the way down there and find out I can't, so there was nothing really that much interesting past the stone circle anyway. So we'll cut back up to Hobhurst House and then back the way we came. Look at all these wankers. Don't they know what these white lines mean. You know, you get all get tickets, mate. Blocking the road off. Fucking tossers. Park light cons, mate. Forgot my stickers today, mate. Oh, I'd have given a few out. Look at it. Utterly ridiculous. It's a lay by there. It's like a car's been burnt out there. People are just fools. Fools and idiots. Entitled idiots. Look at that. <laughs> tossers. Absolute tossers. This is a park gate stone circle. Again, Bronze Age. Not necessarily tied to Hobhurst or Hurst House. Hobhurst, there's a bloke called Work at Rob Hurst. Hobhurst House. <laughs> yeah, look, see the circle here. Where's that one square? But it's definitely Bronze Age. I'm going to have a look here. This looks like the main stone. There's a theory that. They tend to replicate the profile. Possibly. Possibly. But yeah, another one. There's quite a few stones here, some stones in the middle. Uh, I think Mr. Bateman dug this as well. So, beautiful place again. I think I might stop here for lunch. But I'll put some information up, take some pictures. It's like there's a bit of a cairn here or something in the middle. Possibly. But yeah. Super duper. Another one ticked off a list. So I think, play a slight change of route. 
there's a path that runs up here up to Hobhurst house so what I'm thinking is I'll cut there and round it's about the same distance and then it's uh, back down to the car then so uh, I'm gonna grab some lunch maybe have a little bit of a chat in a bit and I'll catch up with you in a bit well hello again um, just gonna have some lunch now and a coffee at uh, Parkgate Stone Circle so I've got some cheese and pickle sandwiches crisps and somewhere in here a flask a flask of coffee good thing about this little remote apart from trying not to lose it is that uh, I can do the camera from a distance but yeah so that's a nice little walk that got the back end route now back up where we came from so we saw Hobhurst house which is a, a abode of a goblin or a hobgoblin it's a bronze age uh, square sort of a uh, ruin we went along Holland edge that was quite hard it's just no pass there it's just through heather and gamekeepers tracks to the trig on Beely Moor give you a bit of spiel about the Beely Moor murder murders back in 1977 and then we come back round here to Pargate, Park Gate which is again um, and if a Bronze Age uh, stone circle site, going back three and a half, four thousand years, we saw some cool uh, old pack, pack horse route uh, milestones, boundary stones, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they were quite cool to see. So yeah, we're here at Park Gate now, and then we're going to head off back up the hill. I don't know if there's much else to say really. Just going to grab some lunch now, a couple of cups of coffee and then we'll start heading back but yeah been a great little walk that and not seeing a soul came out a bit early there's nobody in the car park when i got to the robin hood car park the robin hood pub um probably rammed when i get back but i've not seen anybody up here it's a lovely quiet bit i saw um steve off uh, tramp tramp in the hills or tramp on the hills whatever his name is he went across holland edge didn't see a soul till i got to the trig and the bloke was running up from the road but yeah enjoy that enjoying the walk really good hoping to go and do a bit of wild camping next week so keep an eye on the channel i've also got roped into the castleton fell race that's now going to be called the great ridge race so i'm going to do all the uh, social media advertising for that and do some marshalling so we're hoping to grow the event from sort of around 95 this year because it's been off the calendar for about four or five years so we're going to get out back up to i think at its peak it was about 300. anyway that's just sort of a little bit of an update on me i'm going to grab my lunch I'm going to show you to my sandwiches i've realized looking back that that's not a great view uh, and now i'm going to head back up there and uh, i'll catch up with you on the way if i see anything interesting it's a bit wet over there over towards wen hill and pamford edge see the rain coming down that's going to miss us hopefully we are headed this way and to the left so i'm hoping that that shower's going over that way it's a looking by the wind and the cloud movement it is so yeah we're back up on the path we came along now so let's head back down here caught some stone chats and i think possibly a wind chat down there so we'll see what the pictures come out like um so i feel like i'm a lot fitter now i went up there no problem at all not a huge amount of ascent in this walk I think about 900 to a thousand foot something like that nothing majorly steep but i think it's 10 just over 10 mile so that's probably the furthest i've walked in a little while so i'm going to try and up the mileage then start up in the weight get out once twice a week with that 15 kilo pack on do some wild camping as well and i'm doing weights so yeah lost over a stone now just got to keep it up about another half to a stone off when i used to do martial arts in my youth i was about 13 10 and like a butcher's dog you know but, but i've got to be sensible i'm 56 now coming on 57 so but never say never so yeah all feeling good blood pressure's right down to a normal range so that's good because we're on about putting me on some meds for that so that's good news see how we go we're going to head back down this lovely track through that birch forest where it's sort of being rewilded and uh, 
back along that lovely brook to the car. If and when I see anything interesting, I'll pop a bit up on the video. Tell you what, that's a bloody high wall for a sheep pen, isn't it? Shoot. It's almost like, you know, a fortress. <laughs> a barn behind it. So yeah, you can see the showers coming in over there. If you're out on the edges today, mate, you might have got a bit wet. Luckily, we've had sunshine. A strange orange thing in the sky. Yeah, not far to go now. I'm just going to wander down here, back for that lovely little brook, and we're back at the Robin Hood. Just look at that formations, all the lichen and the shape of that rock. I mean, lichen can live, I don't know, it's a ridiculously long time, isn't it? But look at all the erosion on the top there, it's cool, that, isn't it? Back over the so called closed footpath. Let's have a ghost. Look out. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Here we go. And then over here. Well, that must have been raging down here when they did that. I thought they're trying to repair it there. But up here we go. Footpath closed my arse, mate. <laughs> well, we're back at the Robin Hood now. That was a cracking walk, that. Uh, 10 miles, bang on the money. So, yeah, I felt all right. Actually, I could have done a few more, I think. Um, about a thousand foot of ascent. So, we went to Punta Gibbet Moor. We went down to Harland Edge, we went to Hobhurst's house, where the goblin was repeatedly lived. Then we went along Harland Edge to the Trig Point at the end of Bealey Moor, and then I gave a bit of a spiel about the horrific murders that happened back in 1977 with the escaped prisoner. Then we dropped down past some really good milestone markers for the old pack horse roads. Then back over to Park Gate, Stone Circle, another Bronze Age sort of uh, site. Then back up and along the way we came. Loads of wildlife, stone chats, uh, skylarks, curlews, lots of wildflowers, some stunning scenery. Really recommend that walk. Bits were a bit dicey. Across to the trig on Bealey Moor, there's not been much support from gamekeepers' tracks and they disappeared at times. And the path along the river where the footpaths closed can be a bit dicey in places, but you know, if you care, careful, you'll be fine. So, yeah, I'll uh, catch you on the next video, which hopefully is going to be a wild camp somewhere in the Dark Peak.